or something. But it's pretty fun. <laughs> Is the audio okay? All day. Okay, you guys went to EDC? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> tell, me, tell me how was EDC? EDC was bomb. It was a shit. It was yep. like the best rave in the world. <laughs> Electric Daisy Carnival is a music festival that is during the day and at night and there's carnival rides. It's like one of the biggest like events in the US. It's just like yeah. massive DJs from all around the world. EDC is like a magical place that just amplifies raves by like tenfold. It was how many, it was like six, seven stages going to all these like different areas, you know, having their own themes, it was real cool. It's a great feeling, like I've never felt so connected to so many people. Like thinking about EDC months and months later still gives me chills to think about how beautiful that entire trip was. And it like it's terrible to think that it will probably never be the same again. This is an unbelievable sight. You can hear and see that there's a rave in the middle of the city. Who is responsible for the rampant drug use and violence during the two days? It was literally like a dogfight. Just like floods of people bum rushing their way in. Okay, motherfuckers! Everybody down here pay money to fucking party! You motherfuckers is fucking up the party! Hundreds of partygoers were injured at Electric Daisy this weekend. Well, I think the media did, like, take it to the next level. As journalists, particularly now when we have less and less resources, we focus on things that need help. We focus on things that have problems. You know, if you're a news person, it's kind of a dream come true. Nothing's going to draw people like drugs and a death. massive weekend rave at the L.A. Coliseum ended with the death of one underage girl. 15-year-old Sasha Rodriguez collapsed. Suspected drug overdose. She attended a rave over the weekend at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum. My main concern was her age and that she wasn't supposed to be there. It was supposed to be off limits to those 16 and under. The team's death puts music festivals like this one in the hot seat and the drug ecstasy in the spotlight. Sasha took the drug ecstasy. The drug ecstasy was abundant. So one week after a teenager died from an ecstasy, to see overdose, the Board of Supervisors took action. Susan Hirasuna tells us about the task force that will recommend changes. When I heard about this task force, I was like, this is incredible. And this is like, unlike anything that's happening anywhere else in the country. Virtually everybody will get this, and this is widely distributed. The amount of preparation that has gone into making it safe is impressive. It, it makes you feel good, but it also just scares you. If you or your friends feel hot or sick, it's okay to ask for help. Never buy drugs or accept drinks from strangers. You never know what you're going to get. So this really was a totally new way of responding to people using drugs. We are on the brink of making the decision of making a transition from an enforcement perspective to a public health perspective. I think they, like, they're not giving out permits to this venue anymore. I really doubt it because they make so much money off it. This electronic concert was responsible for tens of millions of dollars of revenue and over 4,000 jobs. Electronic concerts may not be coming back to the community in the near future, but there has been no effort to say what do you replace them with. We're at the LA Coliseum. This place is great. They, they need to throw more parties here. I think the city should lighten up on the uh, rave scene. You know, it's not as bad as... 10-4. I gotta go, guys. Sorry. Copy that. The question remains, should large-scale commercialized raves such as the Electric Daisy Carnival be permanently banned? Ever since EDC happened, things changed, but they shouldn't have to change. They should have just uh, updated the rules a little. I've been around the world and I've never seen anything like this dedicated.